Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, yeah, the cough is, uh, it was reflux, although that still hasn't been officially diagnosed, but for some reason my GP is like, no, this is definitely not reflux, it's definitely something where we have to send you on a round robin to like, you know, all these specialists, and everyone says you're fine, and then three months you just do it again. I'm like, what the hell, this is very obviously reflux. Um, so I started taking some over-the-counter stuff and it barely worked and then I went on vacation And it's like it stopped working over the ocean. I landed in Scotland. I could barely talk I mean not even like a sentence. I couldn't even get sentence fragments out It's like how am I supposed to have a freaking vacation? So I just started just pounding all the over-the-counter stuff and just barely got there finally in Paris I ran out of the over-the-counter and I went to a little pharmacy and I asked for the stuff I usually get, and he's like, we have that, but I recommend this. Tried it. <sighs> Jesus. It's ridiculous. Like, it, that, that was it. I've been talking to doctors for years, and then I have to get a prescription here. Thank you, French pharmacist on the Avenue Wagnam in the, what was it, 17th? 17th arrondissement. Uh, thank you very much. You did a lot better than everyone in friggin' America did. Anyway, Heather Antos put this up earlier and then she took it down. So, change of heart or maybe someone said, that's literally the stupidest shit you could say in your life. So she says, uh, dear business people everywhere, whenever walking into a room with creatives, please for the love of God, never ever use the phrase monetize content. Sincerely, creatives everywhere. This is probably um, relating to uh, Zaslav over there at uh, Warner Discovery. And he's, uh, he's uh, slashing uh, costs uh, all over the place. And it's happening at other uh, companies. And then all of these creatives. By the way, I remember like five to ten years ago, Creatives were making fun of the word creatives because that's that's how the corporate people refer to us. It's so dismissive. Now it's how they refer to them. Okay, fine. Um, so uh, first of all, I'm not really sure you're a creative. Uh, you seem to be managerial at best. Uh, second of all, the only reason you have any income is because Marvel, and then you got fired or left, and then Valiant, and then you got fired or left, and now IDW and Image. Although it doesn't seem like you're full time at either one of those places, we're monetizing content. That's literally how capitalism works. You are selling things, physical books. By the way, I went to a comic book store for the first time in forever, and it it was so weird to pick up an actual floppy comic. It's like, what is this? Um, but you're in a business to sell comics, to sell them digitally, to sell them in stores, to sell them in Barnes and Noble, Amazon wherever but you've decided that this is a place a platform your for your politics and your you know just ego in general whenever they walk into a room it should be only for talking about monetizing because that's literally the business you guys stopped doing business in a business then just inertia and you know the boss's boss not really paying attention. And then when things started to flatten out, now they're looking at things with some scrutiny. And they're saying, why did we make a Batgirl movie that no one's talking about? Because the day before it was announced that it was done, nobody was talking about it. A movie that's so exciting, Michael Keaton, oh, it's a new female hero. Nobody was talking about it. No one. So they said some very simple stuff. Why did we spend $80 million to spend another $80 million to break even or lose money when we can use that 80 million to get whatever, you know, Aquaman 3 or whatever is going to do good. I didn't like that first Aquaman movie, but that thing made a billion dollars. I, I saw this other thing where it was Neil Gaiman and he was talking about the Sandman. Uh, he has to because no one else did. I mean, Colleen Duran and Alex DeCampier, they can't stop talking about it, but normies are not aware it exists, even though it's supposedly the number one Netflix show. I don't think that category means as much as anyone thinks it does. I mean, I think it means it's number one because they put it number one and the most people clicked on it. 
then they stopped watching it five minutes in because it just looks like every you know every other Netflix show. Because Jupiter's Legacy was number one as well, but the <laughs> the numbers just said you know this is too expensive or or whatever. So he is being very I would say humble, and he is basically you know he's a creative, but he is absolutely trying to get his content monetized by more people watching it. I and mean, he's saying it flat out, you know, this has to be watched. If you know, if you if you wait, you know, if it's in your list but you don't watch it, it doesn't count. Like this thing needs to be watched because it's all these decisions are just going to be based on numbers. You know, the idea is, oh, we're number 1. That's a guaranteed renewal. Nope. Not if the numbers say it wasn't profitable. And this is one of those things I keep repeating. I'm not trying to be condescending, but I didn't know this shit until just a few years ago. I didn't realize that you didn't just have to like make money in business, but you had to increase it every year or the board would vote the CEO out. Like it is like a desperate position to be in. The other thing is that things can be profitable and still not worth your time. So it's uh, one of those things where I, I want to keep repeating this because I think some people don't get it. Because it is counterintuitive. Hey, they're making money. Why don't they just release it? As long as it doesn't lose money, they're no. Because you can use that eighty million to put ten more viable projects into pre-production, and then you can get great dividends, literally, out of that. But the this snotty mean girls attitude, Heather, you need to take that shit back to twenty eighteen. Because this is twenty twenty two and everyone's getting fired. Anyway, thanks for watching.